It's time for In Bed with Jed. back to In Bed with Jed, the virtual edition for now, until we can go live again. And I am so excited because I have a guest with me who I have been waiting to speak with for seemingly forever, uh, as, as long as um, I've heard about this project, since the first time I've been wanting to speak with him. And he is a filmmaker. His new movie is a documentary called Trans in Trumpland. That title is just very provocative. So you know that we're in for something really, <laughs> really exciting. And uh, the time is finally right for the two of us to get in bed together, or at least together in Zoom land. You know, how much we love 2020. Okay. Not, nah, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> so today, like I said, we have a very special guest. We have filmmaker Tony Zasha Rapitan. And uh, how are you doing today, Tony? I'm doing good, Tony. I thought we could finally... Uh, Twenty twenty style, and talk about the film and everything, and answer any questions you got. So I'm doing, I'm doing well. Yeah, well, thank you for joining me. And uh, again, I am like so excited about this. And it's funny because uh, you know when I said that normally, like in bed with Jed, I encourage everybody to wear what they normally wear to bed. And uh, yeah. but when you said something about pajamas, I'm, I'm like, I don't have a pair of pajamas. I got rid of mine a long time ago. But I did drag out the union suit, and I have to thank you for that because it is so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, cool. I my uh, Superman uh, pajamas on, <laughs> and uh, my Greek Greek shirt, so <laughs> comfy. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, you look very comfy too. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, the first uh, first congratulations about the new movie. And it's now in uh, post production, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a four year process, and I'm just so happy that it's like pretty much already done. Uh, it's just being color and sound corrected, and it's ready to get out into the world in a month in January. And um, I just, I'm really excited for people to like see and hear the stories. There's four stories in my story in there, and I think like people are just gonna love it especially if they're not as familiar with trans issues, there's just so much to learn in the series. So yeah, we're in post, almost there. The finish line is like a week away. <laughs> wow, January, uh, well, 2021 is looking better than ever. I'm sure we're all uh, looking forward to it for obvious reasons, but now, now I have another added reason to get excited. And uh, I've heard you, like I said, we chatted about your journey with the movie and uh, the people that you've spoken with, and you have a very large and diverse and colorful cast and crew assembled. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But first, I have to know, because most people that are not in the film industry or not in the entertainment industry, they don't realize how much work goes into producing a feature length film. And it takes, I know from experience, it could take uh, a whole day sometimes to shoot a 30, second commercial or a music video it could take weeks to film a short film but yeah, to yeah. make uh, an entire feature length uh, documentary and especially one where you're really going out there and dealing with people's real real lives that's that's a big task and so what was the pathway like from when you first conceived of the idea to do this movie to where we are now where it's we can see the movie on the horizon. Uh, what's that been like for you? Yeah, no, I, I think like a lot of times people who are in the film industry, like they don't understand like how much work goes even into like, like you mentioned, like a 30 second video that could be a whole day of shooting. 
And um, so for the four episodes that will uh, premiere, they're all about like, you know, 25 to 32 minutes. So a lot of content and we were shooting for like 10 days each. So definitely intense. Um, but yeah, the, the project is four years old. So it goes back all the way to 2016 to the very first week that President Trump won. Um, so the idea, the title was the first thing that popped into my head. And it's like, you know, when you get those like random thoughts that you're just like, wow, like that just popped into my head out of nowhere. That's exactly what happened. So I remember I was like with my mom and it was like the second day after he won and we're just like in Massachusetts together where I'm from and just like cooking and being like depressed. And it was like trans and Trump land. It just popped into my brain. And I was like, whoa. And I talked to her about like it with my mom and she was like, that's a really catchy title. She was like, oh, you know, you should run with that. And she's like, you, this should be your next film. And I was like, yeah, definitely. So um, I thought to myself, like, what exactly would it be? And at first I thought a feature film rather than an episodic series. So I was like, okay, it would be a feature film, a documentary about trans people who are in the most conservative states. So really like the most marginalized people in America. And um, for me too, I, I realized too, as like someone from the Northeast, like I have a lot of privilege as a trans person in the New York area. Like I have a lot of rights here. So I really wanted to showcase like the worst of the worst that was going to happen back then that I anticipated under the Trump administration. So that first week, he literally removed any mention of LGBT rights on the White House website. So I knew I had to, to go forth. So that was 2016, 2017, we did a lot of like fundraising. 2018 was a lot of fundraising. It takes a lot of money to make films. And then, um, you know, kind of over the years from 27 to 2018, I recruited the subjects. So I found them literally all on Facebook, actually, just through friends of friends. I'm like, does anyone know someone in Mississippi? Oh yeah, I know her. Uh, does anyone know someone in like North Carolina? Oh yeah, I know a, a young trans guy there. Um, so it's like the power of the internet. Right. And um, 2019, we had our funding and we started filming in the fall of 2019 and completed production like December of 2019, right before the pandemic. So we got lucky with that. We completed everything like a month before the pandemic hit. It was wild. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so film took a while. The most, uh, yeah, the most time is funding. And production fun. Production was just like six months, you know. So, but uh, yeah, it was a very like um, long process, but I loved it because I knew I was going to make a difference, you know, for trans people and just LGBT people in general. <laughs> wow. Well, it's funny because you mentioned uh, when a random thought just pops into your head. I have ADD, so but that happens all the time. And uh, <laughs> the trick is to just basically catch that thought and run with it. And I think uh, collectively we're all glad you did that. But uh, wow, when you said that you started like in you know 2016, when yeah. things were exactly when things were just starting to get uh, a little bit scary for the GLBTQ community and all that. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like you really took that idea and ran with it. And I also have to add, your mother sounds like a really cool woman, too. So <laughs> yeah. for, saying, for saying you should make a movie about that. So uh, cheers to your mother yeah. if she's watching. <laughs> yeah. wow. she, um, she's like part of the, the series, too. And I like her story, actually, um, not to spoil too much, but like she unfortunately passed away in 2018. So like partly oh. like she's in the story and she's the motivation for the film so like i won't spoil anything but like her story and our story is like a thread in the series so that's cool and that's like one of the most exciting parts that like i feel like is really awesome is like supportive mothers and that like the recurring theme is in the series but yeah she was awesome she hated trump uh she was super like lgbt friendly and when i told her the title she's like oh you gotta roll with that you gotta go with that you know so my mom was awesome, yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, if things were, if we were in a different time, if it wasn't for a certain little something called COVID, then uh, you and me would be uh, probably going to the movie premiere, not in pajamas, not in my union suit. We would be dressed a little bit more nicely, hopefully, and uh, going to a, <laughs> going to a uh, celebrity studded film premiere somewhere in New York City or uh, <laughs> somewhere else or other places. 
but since uh, since now things have changed, movies aren't necessarily premiering in theaters, and obviously big crowds are discouraged for the time being. What are your plans now when the movie comes out, and uh, what can you do to make sure that everybody sees this, like as many people and the people that need to see it see it, especially? Yeah, um, been on my mind for so long because um, I love to celebrate. Like I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm a partier, and I like to be out. Um, we were gonna do like in a non-COVID world, we were gonna do like a super awesome like um release party in new york and just like invite people like supporters crew and cast um and you know our executive producers and what, whatnot we were, i was gonna have like a fun party for everyone but we can't do that now um so now it's just like we'll probably schedule something virtually like maybe some kind of like virtual screening for everyone but we're gonna get the word out there about the release so we got lucky because we got bought out and We'll be premiering on like Topic, which is like a channel, uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Apple TV, and Roku. So we got lucky as as a crew because like our film is going to be out there at a time when people are staying indoors. So probably what we're going to do is a hell lot of marketing. Um, so we'll be running the trailer and like Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Deadline, other publications, The Advocate, and we're just going to do as much like social media uh, marketing as well to make sure that people know how they can watch our trailer, where they can watch the episodes and when. So yeah, I just, I'm just lucky that I got like such an awesome crew that's held it together during COVID to like make sure we're completed, we're edited and we're out there, we're marketed. Um, but it is rough to not be able to attend things in person. So yeah, film festivals, release parties, it's rough. It is rough because I've been reviewing films Oh, wow. Uh, at the risk of revealing my age here, uh, well, <laughs> you all can figure it out. But I remember when a new movie came out, they used to actually send you an invitation to see it in a theater with other critics. And yep. then things changed, and then they would mail you the DVDs. <laughs> and now they just send you a link so that you could watch it online. So things have changed. Again, not quite as exciting. Uh, you know, you got to meet a lot of... Uh, very cool people when you were actually sitting in a theater and you got to hear the reactions from other people from better or worse. But I've come to learn though that the platforms that you can see movies now, including the way everybody's going to be watching Trent and Trumpland, is that it reaches literally every corner of the world. Uh, and people that may not have the opportunity, let's say there's just not a kind of theater that would show independent films in their neighborhood, or even if they don't have access to uh, uh, a DVD shop or a place that you could find it. So there's a lot that can be said about Amazon Prime and Apple TV and all those venues because people need to see this all over the world, obviously, not just in the States, you know? So so that's, that's a good thing about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's a positive and negative. Positive is like, you know, say there's like, I don't know, a young like trans or queer person that doesn't have access to like a theater or lives like in a remote part of like Wyoming, they can just like go on their TV and be like, oh, I, I'm Amazon Prime, okay, trans and Trump land. So we're kind of looking at it as like, okay, we have we have this like circumstance that's beyond our control. Let's look at the positive and um, yeah, I'm just like happy as a director that my work's gonna be out there. It's like an honor and I know sometimes like, you know, some directors don't have that, that, that lock. So yeah, it'll it'll be good. Like I'm so glad too that it's been, like good timing with like around the inauguration plus winter. So like a lot of people will be like tuned in. So all all good stuff. And I'm sure we can party eventually, right? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like in twenty five, you know. <laughs> wow. Now uh, we had some good news in November. <laughs> Uh, two guesses won't be necessary, but I couldn't help think. In fact, I uh, I was wondering, like, uh, shortly after the election, uh, I was thinking, okay, the are we the the title must take on a new perspective. The title of your movie, uh, Trans and Trumpland, because by the time it comes out, like you said, will be the inauguration. And did that put a whole new uh, perspective onto your movie? Because I thought it's like, well, uh, we're not technically living it. We're not going to be living in Trump land anymore soon. <laughs> so what was that like? So, 
Yeah, no, that's definitely that we were thinking about. Um, even just like six months ago, we were like, okay, well, if we're hopefully done with editing before the election, which like we tried to be done and out, but the editing just wasn't done to like release right before the election, like say September, October. We were thinking about it. We're like, if we were to release in winter of 2021, what would the title look like? What would everything look like? Uh, you know, if Trump wasn't, you know, hopefully if he was reelected, ooh, you know, like what would that, what would happen? So um, with now with like Biden's win, we're kind of thinking like the series will really allow viewers to have this perspective, not only from like the lens of like trans rights, but we also talk about race and class in the, in the series, have this perspective of like what exactly happened over the past four years? What was Trump's impact? Where are we right now? And where are we going? So, um, you know, even just in like the, the last um, episode in Idaho, um, you know, I won't spoil anything, but like my lines kind of take this on and we're like, even though we have a new president, these four characters that we filmed in uh, North Carolina, Texas, Mississippi, and Idaho, they all live in states that voted to reelect Trump. So we're kind of, it kind of is like the title, I think uh, right now, what it's really focused on is like, sure, Biden won, but this Trump land is still going to persist. And, you know, Trump supporters will still try even for 2024, you know, I feel like to elect someone then. And also like, I think this running threat of like conservatism in these states, it's not gonna go away with Biden. So it's kind of like this theme of like state, state rights versus federal rights. Like there, this is gonna be something that is talked about a lot over the next four years, specifically with trans rights is like, you know, why should I in New York have more rights than someone in Texas, for example, you know? Um, and it's really sad, the disparities that exist between states. Um, so yeah, so I think kind of like, if I had to put it together, it's, it's gonna allow viewers to like really realize like what Trump's impact was in the trans community for the past four years. So we hopefully don't repeat it again. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, you brought up a good point that just because uh, there's a change in, uh, leadership at the top doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, okay, it's going to be paradise now. <laughs> and you mentioned uh, New York City, you know, which is where I live. And New York City probably has the best human rights on paper and the best opportunities and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of privilege that a lot of states don't have. But that certainly doesn't mean that it's easier for LGBTQ people, you know, and uh, it's a still a struggle and it's still a fight every day. And uh, every day there'll be another piece of news about, uh, which will remind us that we still have to keep the fight for equality open. So I think that uh, it's, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it will be a reminder too, to everybody about that. So kind of a very prophetic. We still have a lot of work to do um, from an activist standpoint. And I think people will do it, but yeah, the series will be a reminder that it's like not gonna be all sunshine and rainbows, you know, come January 20th. Um, but it'll be better though. I'm not gonna deny that. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Wow. So now what did you learn about yourself? Because you've always been very open about, uh, you know, on, uh, you've always been open about your own life story and you share a lot about that, your own journey. Uh, what did you learn further about yourself when you were doing this, when you were profiling other, other trans folk and everything like that? What did you learn about yourself in the process? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I guess on like a life level, I learned that I freaking love filmmaking and traveling. So <laughs> I'm gonna, it makes me happy and I feel like so lucky. Like I, I left a full-time career in healthcare actually in like 2018, so not too long ago, to make the film full time. Um, I was actually creating Trans and Trump Land like part time while I was doing nursing full time from like 2016 to 2018. So um, I took a risk and I was like, you know, a stable career versus like filmmaking, which can be risky. And I was like, but I gotta do it. I have to make Trans and Trump Land. So yeah, one thing I realized is like, I really love telling people's stories. I love traveling, I love filmmaking, I love art. So it really deepened um, that, my relationship to like interests. 
And I also realized like, damn, trans people and queer people and LGBT people, et cetera, we're all resilient as hell. Um, <laughs> and it's, you know, like just even meeting, for example, like, uh, you know, Ivana, who's the trans woman featured in our third episode in Mississippi. It's like, damn, you're doing good work. You're, you're running a nonprofit in Mississippi. You're a black trans woman. Like, that's amazing. And like, you know, in, in North Carolina, a 15 year old trans boy who came out at the age of 12, like, these are people that are making it and like blossoming and like the least likely of spaces. So to me, it was such an honor and privilege to like talk to them um, and really like go deep into their stories. And so like, I kind of feel like it really just was a reminder that like people are resilient, you know, and we got through the past four years, um, you know, all together. So um, it just like kind of really deepens like my interest in like telling human stories and it kind of in my way like restored my faith in humanity during this like really trying four years because like I saw a lot of people in these states like just locally who like I thought would be transphobic but weren't and that really like made me kind of happy. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm jealous. I'm jealous because of the traveling. And, uh, <laughs> and I do still work in healthcare, uh, but, and, it, and I like what I do, <laughs> but I do think that filmmaking and any kind of like artistic, anything in the, the media and the arts, it really allows you to express that creative side that you might not have when you're doing a job that pretty much with healthcare is pretty much there is a right way to do thing and the wrong way to do thing and not much room in between. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so it, that's great that you found a career that allows you to really express that creative side there and, and change people's minds and lives and all that. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's I know fun. that, what's that? It was, it's fun to be creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Now, I know that you visited, I think it was 39 states. Uh, did the number change since then? <laughs> 39 states? Yeah, uh, oh. yeah that's I made it to, what was my 40th state? My 40th state became Nevada. So I just need the 10, uh, which is like the Dakotas, Hawaii, Alaska, Nebraska, and like Kentucky, like some like kind of mostly in the Midwest. So I'm looking to do the next 10, I don't know, hopefully within the next like 10 years, like one, one more state a year. But I made it to 40 states, Nevada. Ooh. So I think we're going blue Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I just, like, I just love traveling. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do, like, a season two of Trans and Trump Land, like, Trans and Biden Land, um, or, I don't know, like, some kind of traveling, like, show where I interview, like, and maybe activists or other people, like, on the way, you know? Yeah, you got to get those last 10 states in there, uh, plus uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'll come with you for that. Uh, Guam and Puerto Rico, I'll come with you for that, too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Get them all in there. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now we know. I know, and you know both. I mean, I listen. New York has a funny way of keeping you in what I call the pink bubble. And if you live in New York, it's very, very easy to not leave New York because everything we have is pretty much here. We forget sometimes that there is a whole country out there, and. I didn't really start exploring other states, including some red states, until I uh, got involved with the rodeo a few years back. And then you really get to see life in, in other states. Now, we know that you can't judge a whole state by, you know, just what we, uh, what we see in the media or what we read in the news mm -hmm. and things like that, or if the state is red or blue, because there's, you know, wonderful people in every state. But which area that you visited really left the biggest impression on you? What was just like, whoa, oh my God, I can't believe that this was a life-changing experience. Was there one yeah. particular place? Uh -huh. I think, I think probably I would have to say, yeah, I don't know. Um, just because it was like really beautiful and also uh, like we were, we filmed on a reservation there we met with like a, a Native American, um, like two spirit veteran, veteran named Shane. And I had never been that far out yet. Um, and so I know it's like, 
it's not only breathtaking, but also like there were a lot of people we met who were not native. Like we didn't really disclose too much when we like met with people. Like if we went all out to eat at like lunch at a nearby cafe, like we made sure not to say too much about trans stuff because you never know. But like a lot of them too, when we mentioned like when they would ask like, what are y'all doing? We see a camera, like blah, blah, blah. We'd say like, oh, we're, we're friendly, uh, a Native American activist. And they were like, oh, I feel so bad about how our country has treated Native people. And these were non-Native people like, you know, they look like they might be like kind of conservative and we were, we were kind of shocked by that like just that people like really were like informed and kind of woke about certain issues that we thought they might not be so like in those instances if we did kind of disclose like oh you know the person is trans that we're filming they actually seemed okay about it and that really shocked me so i would say like i came away with like the most changes and like the most change in my perspective and like my understanding of the country in Idaho, but they were all cool though. Like Mississippi was like second, I think like second most interesting than like Texas and North Carolina. Um, but yeah, Idaho for sure. Um, very interesting place, you know? Um, wow. Even just, like, I was driving right one night with my producer and these like green flashes came by and like the sky and we were like, don't know what that was, UFO meter shower i don't know but like wild that part of the country is wild yeah so yeah <laughs> wow uh, that, uh, that's definitely on my list i mean i uh, there, there's places i would like to see too if for nothing else just the countryside and see some of that beautiful uh, n wonders of nature you know so yeah. would love to see that yeah. yeah now uh it's now i've worked uh, i i'm a registered nurse and I, uh, we do 24 hour surgery. So we do a lot of, uh, top surgery mostly because that's 24 hours. You have it done. You stay overnight in the morning. If you're pain free, you walk around, everything looks good. The dressings, you know, give them a kiss on the cheek, give them their discharge papers and they go home. And, <laughs> but the stories that I hear as a healthcare professional, uh, are just astonishing and they're just amazing and I hear a lot of really life-affirming stories and a lot of you know, anecdotes that really reveal a lot about human nature and all that and uh, including just about gender in general and all that and I had this one young man who was a patient of mine and he was telling me uh, I think I brought up uh, something like uh, if he was being discharged late at night I'm like are you gonna be okay to walk home and he said that when he was uh when he was interpreted as a, a female before he had uh surgery and had a lot of other a lot, a lot of other things done there is always that fear uh as an express as, as a as a perceived female when you're walking through the streets there's always that fear and he does not feel that way anymore even though he's the same person so it just really reveals a lot, I think, about gender and all that. And it really opened my eyes, too. It's just like what, you know, what different, you know, what you go through, uh, whether it's your express gender, you know, express gender or how other people perceive you. Just really that, that one statement that he made really, really made a big impression on me there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you have a very, uh, like I said, you have a very... Uh, diverse cast and crew there. Uh, anybody you want to give a particular shout out to on the team? Anybody that really helped you make this uh, movie? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man, I wish I could thank everyone for like. For, first, I want to say like without uh, my producer Jamie, he's awesome. Uh, we uh, co-own Transway Films together in New York City, and uh, it's a like trans-owned production company. Um, and we kind of focus on a lot of like queer and trans storytelling. So shout out to Jamie. He's been with me since like 2016, making this project uh, a reality. Um, my director of photography, uh, Leroy, he was awesome. My sound mixer, Andrew. Uh, my editors, uh, Jason, was it Mohammed, Peter, and Leroy also helped edit. So like just a ton of like crew that really has been there with me. Also, the four characters who are in the series, shout out to them. So like the first episode will feature Ash, he's awesome, and his mother Daisy. Uh, second episode will be Texas, which is Rebecca, she's awesome. And then third episode, Mississippi, Ivana and Giselle, they're awesome. And the fourth 
uh, episode, the finale in Idaho is, uh, is Shane, who's, who's awesome as well. So yeah, and also like my family uh, as well, you know, they, they've been supportive of, of me since the beginning. And um, yeah, it's just like a team effort. Filmmaking is like so collaborative and uh, I wouldn't like have been here without all the people that have supported me. But uh, yeah, and shout out to all the like, I don't know, like just LGBTQ people in the US, like keep going, you know, we're almost there. And yeah. Um, <laughs> We made it through the four years of foam. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Do you have any, uh, do you still believe in uh, New Year's resolutions? Do you, because uh, I know a lot of people, uh, they probably had a lot of New Year's resolutions for 2020 and uh, okay, now we're <laughs> waiting for the year to finish. Do you have any New Year's resolutions for 2021? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I do meditations on like, okay, what should I do? I feel like probably my biggest one is like just in general hope for like the country and the world. It's like, I hope we can get this pandemic out of here. Like, I'm sure everyone misses, like I miss my family and friends and seeing people and whatever and uh, traveling internationally. Uh, but I think my New Year's resolution is just like keep, keep making films, um, you know, 2021, get trends and trembling out there and have as many people see as possible. And uh, just kind of keep like digging into like self growth, like self growth, uh, you know, spiritually and emotionally. Like my my biggest uh, 2021 goal, you know, because 2020 has been a lot of like introspection. So yeah, just keep going with that. <laughs> it's also been a way that we keep finding ways to reinvent. It's like okay. You can't go to the gym, so you start exercising at home. You can't go out to restaurants, so you learn how to cook. We, uh, you can't uh, meet people, uh, someone who should be sitting here in bed, and we could be having coffee like this, and, uh, you know, we have a Zoom meeting instead. So we, we, we find new ways, you know. We can't, can't have a film premiere in a theater, so we have it, uh, you know, by, uh, an, you know, an internet party. <laughs> so... Yeah. So we, we've, you know, it really has encouraged me that so many people are finding new ways to uh, make do with what's thrown at us this year. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we're together, 2021. <laughs> oh, I, I like to think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you, uh, you live in uh, Jersey City, correct? Yeah, Jersey City. So not too far. I've been here like a decade um so i moved here from brooklyn then was not had before i'm originally from boston but like at this point if i've been here a decade i'm kind of like a you know new yorker but yeah jersey's like decent you know it's like a little quieter and whatever but i'm thinking about exploring like cali who knows maybe la or san diego or like florida so the the right. pandemic has taught me that i really like the sunshine and i miss it so it's been tough Mm, yeah. Well, is Jersey City really the sixth borough? Or do you <laughs> do you like when people say that? Or? <laughs> yeah, like, I think it is. It's like everyone works in like New York here, and like I feel like it's like you see everything across the water. So it's like yeah, exactly the sixth borough. Uh, or we can boot Staten Island and make it the fifth. I don't know. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> 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 wow. So anything else you'd like to tell our audience besides, uh, obviously, keep your eye out for the movie? Anything else you'd like to tell everyone? Or? Yeah, so uh, the plan is like um, our pilot episode, which is North Carolina, our first episode, that'll definitely be out around the uh, inauguration, which I think is like January 20th, so before then. Uh, that'll be streaming on the company that bought us, which is Topic, and then uh, all four episodes will then follow soon in February on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Roku, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're almost there. And I just really hope that like people enjoy the stories and learn a lot and like, you know, trans rights matter. And um, you know, like the next four years are gonna be awesome. So that's what I would say. Yeah, just keep an eye out for the series and um, I hope you like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I wanna thank you for uh, speaking with me today. And for all of you out there, please give uh, Tony a big, big thank you for being here. Tony, Zasha Rafatan. <laughs> I know that you've, uh, 
you've spoken about how uh, your name is always the first hurdle uh, for people getting to know you. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Did I get it right? You did good. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel so much better. And the movie is called Trans and Trump Land. So we will have more information in the description, but please, uh, please stay, stay posted about that and make sure you check it out. And hope you all have a great day. And uh, yes, if before you ask, you know, I know uh, this union suit does have a flap in the back. Well, uh, if you want me to prove it to you, just subscribe to my channel, that's all. So, <laughs> bye. <laughs>